everybody. I am sitting here at the Oregon Console because today for Coping with COVID, I thought it could be fun to take you on a little tour of the organ, kind of really show you the insides and some parts of the instrument that maybe you've never seen before. Um, the instrument takes up a lot of space. It's a lot more than what you see. It's a lot more than just pipe work too. So I'm gonna take you on a little tour around to different parts of the organ and really show you its inner workings so you can kind of get an idea of the grand scale of these types of instruments. Currently I'm sitting at the console. This is the control center. This is where the magic happens. Uh, that's not true. The magic all happens behind the scenes, but this is where I get to tell the organ what to do and when to do it. But the organ starts with wind. So I thought we'd start at the very beginning, which as I'm told by Julie Andrews is the very best place to start. So we're gonna go down and take a look at the blower which is what generates the wind for the instrument. It's a little bit of a walk away, but come follow me, I promise it'll be worth it. All right, so we are in the room with the blower, which is a, a few flights of stairs down, which honestly is not the most ideal place to house the organ blower, because what the organ blower does, it's an electrical turbine that generates a steady stream of air that we then pump into the pipes so that we can play with a lot of uh, wind. <laughs> um, in, in the most ideal organ scenario, the, the pump would be much closer and even more ideal in the same room as the organ, uh, housed off because it does make some noise. Um, but with this blower being kind of so far removed and being in a not very well insulated room, we're kind of in a, um, a non-insulated closet with the exterior really being right there, it, it's gonna cause some issues with the tuning of the instrument because the temperature of the wind that's being blown through this massive turbine, which is all covered up right now, um, is going to be a different temperature than the air in the sanctuary. And that can cause some problems as we really get going, especially in the extremes. So in like the three days that we get of winter and then of the 12 months we get of summer, um, that can really cause some intonation problems. But whenever I flip a switch on the organ console, it powers on this blower and um, this thing starts turning and cranking out a lot of air like a lot of air and it goes through this pipe and it runs up and you can't really see it and it runs up into the organ now speaking of that let's go back upstairs and kind of take a look at the uh, the air ducts that kind of supply the wind to the instrument so we're gonna go back follow me Okay, I'm a little winded. <laughs> so I'm gonna take you inside the organ. We have this little hobbit door um, that you just push open very carefully because as you see, it was not designed with a lot of space and you don't wanna hit any of the, the pipe work. So we are inside and down here you can see the pipes, or ducts I'll call them, that uh, carry the wind. So down there where it's real big, that's where it is entering where the organ, uh, and it goes into these bellows, of which we have several. You can only see a few right here. You have one here. They will fill up with air and the leathers will expand. And this pressurizes the air so that uh, we can get appropriate pressure moving through the pipes. So then as they go into these bellows, they go into these tubes, and I apologize that it's kind of dark, and these tubes disappear into the void. No, they don't. They keep going in the darkness, but they go up into what we call the chests. Um, I'll show you this one over here. It's a little bit easier to see. So you can see these tubes come up and provide air into the chest which then sends the air into the pipe. That big silver thing is the HVAC system, which I don't know whose idea it was to put an HVAC system in the middle of an organ, but 
I, I would not recommend that. Okay, so now we've seen how the air gets into the instrument, where the air begins, how it gets into the organ, and then how it gets into each individual pipe. So let me exit to the chamber through the hobbit door. So we have the air, we're good to go. But now how does the organ know what pipe needs air and what pipe does not need air? I'm so glad you asked. We're gonna have to take another little adventure. So follow me down, we're gonna go into the organ. Okay, so we are below the choir loft right now and uh, kind of close by the pit that the console sits in. Right there behind me, this, this is the organ console. Um, this is where I sit, down here. So just a good level below the choir loft, uh, about the same level as the baptistry. Look at this computer. This, this is how we control the organ. This is how the organ knows what to do and when to do it. And you thought that that was it. No, psych, it goes all the way around here. Look at all these connections. And I think that's everything. So these all receive an electric current and it's that electric current that goes in and then out. There, that one says the pedal. Um, that will then communicate up, up and away in the void as it goes in and out of the console. So this is how the organ communicates from console up to the pipes. All right, so we know where the air comes from. We know where the air goes. We know how the console then talks to the pipes to tell the air which pipes to sound and which pipes not to sound. So now let's go look at the pipes a little bit more up close. <laughs> and because nothing is convenient with a pipe organ, we're gonna climb back up and go back into the instrument. So keep following me. So we're back inside the organ. I apologize again for the poor lighting, but this is just what we got. So we're gonna duck down and we're gonna get under some of these pipes carefully because everything here is valuable and expensive. <laughs> so look at all of this. You have these magnets and these just different uh, electrical contacts that tell the pipe organ what to do. And essentially what happens is from that computer downstairs, it'll send an electric signal that then will allow this to move, then releases air into that specific pipe. So each one of these little types of magnets and contacts that you see, that is an individual pipe. So there are about 3,000 of those, a little over, in this organ. That's a lot of things to maintain and keep up. So now you can see why it is labor intensive to keep an organ in good tip-top shape and why it's very important that you are proactive with maintenance and not reactive with maintenance. So you'll press a key at the organ console. It'll send an electric signal down to that computer that we just saw, which will then send a signal up to, to release air into the pipe. Hi. Sorry, recording Coping with COVID. And so that is kind of a broad overview of what our organ is and how much space it occupies and how the sound is produced in the instrument from the blower to the reservoirs that compress the air to pressing the key that then tells the organ to release the air. Uh, it's a massively complex instrument uh, and we're very fortunate to have such a large one uh, here at, at UBC. Uh, I hope you learned something from this. Uh, I had fun filming it for you. I hope you had fun watching it. Uh, shoot me an email or comment on this video if you have any questions about the instrument. I am always happy to talk music and technical things about, about uh, pipe organs. So uh, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I hope you are all staying safe and staying healthy and staying well. And I cannot wait until we can be together again. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you.